Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts. Mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Ozone layer. Contact report 007. For many decades, we have been examining all spheres of your world, its steady increase of its changes, and the dangerous effects of propellants and other dangerous pollutants released by the human being of Earth. For some years now, we have noticed that in the stratosphere, a steadily increasing dangerous change becomes noticeable, which can have fatal consequences for all earthly life. To an increasing extent, the ozone belt of the stratosphere is changing due to irresponsible influences of human achievements. Various ozone-depleting chemicals rise as gas substances into the stratosphere and damage the ozone belt. In particular, it concerns chlorofluorocarbons and bromine gases, which smell very bad and in contrast to the term of the human beings of Earth, are designated with us and in our language as poison gases and not as chlorofluorocarbons. It is dangerous that these poison gases reach into the ozone layer of Earth and slowly decompose it. CFC gases are called bromos among the Pleiades. It is already damaged and destroyed at an average extent of 6.38% percentage that is already starting to be harmful and dangerous to all life forms, and that is able to cause mutative changes. This is a percentage that has been reached in as little as 60 years. In particular, it is the chlorofluorocarbon gases and the bromine gas substances that, along with many other pollutants, are slowly destroying the ozone belt, as I have already mentioned earlier. As a result, more ultraviolet radiation from the sun is able to penetrate into the atmosphere, which can damage all life forms. Above different areas, this ozone belt has already been dangerously impaired and has become varying in its protection. At three different points, there is already the danger that it will be broken through within a few decades and completely annihilated, if the release of destructive factors is not restricted. Failure to do so would mean that holes would be torn in the protective shield and ultraviolet solar radiation would penetrate unhindered, which would entail an agonizing death of all life forms. Anything that accidentally gets into the area of the dangerous radiation penetrating through the hole is ultimately exposed to salvageless annihilation. Destructive chemical substances, gases, and radiations are also mainly released by explosive motors and further material-destroying processes of other kinds, such as, for example, nuclear fission and forms similar to it, which have subjected the entire course of the world and all life forms to a bad change on a large scale since 1945. However, Destructive chemical gases and so forth are also released by things of everyday life, as each spray can also release other chemicals besides CFCs, which rise up to the stratosphere and slowly but systematically destroy it. Recently, researchers and scientists of various countries have become that much more knowledgeable and advanced in their cognitions that they have recognized the destructive effect on the ozone belt caused by various chemicals and, in particular, CFCs, and now want to assess this in their irresponsible delusion for power for purposes of war technology. They have already developed fundamental ideas for building missile bodies, whose destructive and deadly factors are supposed to be chlorofluorocarbons and also bromine substances. If they were shot up into the stratosphere and caused to explode there, the consequence would be that enormous holes would be torn into the ozone belt and all ultraviolet radiation from the sun would penetrate uninhibitably. Such a hole, however, can only close itself again very slowly, whereby the process may take centuries, provided that no further destructive substances penetrate. 
In addition, the factor that the ozone belt is subject to a certain movement and roams comes into effect. Hence, a hole in it would not only destroy a very specific area, but it would roam almost uncontrollably and also destroy other wide areas. A fact that is not yet known to your scientists. Moreover, all these are also facts that have hitherto been concealed from the general public. My message is in the sense that the group that you are to form is to dedicate itself to tasks that serve the prevention of and counteract the abuse of such achievements of insanity. Therefore, reach out to governments and scientists and draw their attention to their wrong deeds and actions. It is in the interest of the entire humankind and of all life on Earth to have a banning treaty between all countries of your world in order to stop this deadly insanity. Therefore, turn also to Mr. Michael McElroy at Harvard University in the United States, as he is already an authoritative researcher in this field. Contact Report 031 in the purely atmospheric layers of the Earth, an atomic explosion affects the ozone balance in a quite catastrophic form, primarily through the release of elementary radiation. Through the release of atomic energy, electrical energies of tremendous values are generated by the elementary radiations already mentioned. This happens in a very high frequency range, which is still unknown to earthly science. These energies are not the normal electrical energy that you are familiar with, but an electrical radiation energy that moves in the ultraviolet radiation range. Inevitably, this radiant energy mixes with the oxygen in the air and produces gigantic amounts of the highest quality ozone. If normally only one part of ozone is detectable in 500,000 parts of air, according to terrestrial conditions, the ozone value increases to 34 values for a short time after an explosion, which corresponds to a value of 28 parts. These dangerous levels then destroy all microorganisms in the wider environment, which are of enormous importance for the preservation of all terrestrial life. Shortly after the explosion, the ozone levels drop again very quickly and flatten out. Certain elemental values, however, penetrate all matter and accumulate there for hundreds of years, destroying over and over again all microorganisms that come into their vicinity. This is the one factor related to ozone. Another factor is formed by the ozone belt, which is damaged in manifold ways by gases rising and produced by such explosions, and is no longer able to absorb the ultraviolet radiation of the sun. This is clear to me. Simyase has already spoken of this once in connection with gases from spray cans, etc. But one thing is not quite clear to me. Ozone is also formed by natural lightning phenomena. So why doesn't it destroy microorganisms? Nature works exactly according to the laws given to it. The normal ozone balance on a world is created by various factors, so also by thunderstorms with lightning. On the one hand, ozone produced in this manner cleanses the air of life, hostile pollutants, and on the other hand, large quantities of ozone gas drift upwards and collect at an altitude of about 18 to 27 kilometers to form a belt or mantle that extends around the planet. This ozone belt or mantle then performs the function of a natural shield to protect life forms living on Earth from the very strong ultraviolet radiation of the sun. The direct irradiation of life forms by the ultraviolet radiation of the sun and other similar radiation from other parts of space would inevitably cause the death of all life forms. But in order for this not to happen, the ozone belt is needed. This absorbs a large part of the radiation and converts it into usable values and elementary radiation. Nature itself always produces exactly as much ozone as is necessary to ensure life. 
whether this happens through lightning phenomena or through the action of ultraviolet radiation itself or through other natural events. It always remains the same. Nature never produces more ozone than it needs. Exceptions only occur when catastrophes strike, which are usually of cosmic or planetary origin.